Hello and welcome back to Also Knits. Today I wanted to have a calm and cosy look through some of the lovely patterns that have really been inspiring me and that I'm thinking about knitting for these last couple of months of winter. Now approaching 2023 I have had a lot of ideas endless sort of thoughts about texture and shades and all sorts of designs I've had my eye on. But I've really tried to narrow it down to basic concepts behind how I want to style my knitwear wardrobe going forward. And I will discuss things like texture and colour and the sort of style that I really want to capture in my knitting for this next upcoming year. And talking about being a little bit more mindful and thinking a lot about my personal style, I'm really happy to introduce today's sponsor for this video, which is Lily Silk, who gave me this lovely silk shirt that I'm wearing right now. Now, as today's video is all about elevated classics, I thought that Lily Silk would be the perfect brand to sponsor this one. Lily Silk is a clothing brand that offers really high quality, luscious silk pieces that would make a great addition to almost any classic wardrobe. And in keeping with my theme of elevated classics for this video, I have selected this really gorgeous SOS silk oversized shirt in this stunning shade of navy. Now, as many of you will know, navy is one of my absolute favourite colours. I adore all my blues and navies, and the gorgeous shade of this top certainly hasn't let me down. I'm truly impressed by the softness and the sheen of this material. As soon as I got it out of its beautiful box, I knew that this was going to be something that I would wear again and again. And Lily Silk don't just offer beautiful high quality silk blouses, but they've also got a whole selection of knitted pieces too. And something else I was really excited to hear about is in keeping with their sustainability goals, they use some of their remnant silk fabric to make little pieces like scrunchies. And I'm really thrilled with how light and cool and comfortable silk really is to use and wear. I've been particularly enjoying these undyed pillowcases. The softness of the silk ensures there's no friction as you sleep, and they come with this really handy little compartment that makes them perfect for travelling. Whether it's gorgeous pillowcases that are really smooth to sleep on, or scrunchies that just slide out of your hair, Lily Silk really has some beautiful offerings which would make perfect gifts. If you're interested in Lily Silk at all, you can use my code ALSA12 to get 12% off your order. Now that we've had a word on lily silk, let's get into the video. I've given this video a loose sort of structure where I've broken it down into sections of paired patterns that both represent to me beautiful options of classic pieces that I would really like to add to my wardrobe. And for my first category, I went for cabled sweaters. Now I've got two choices here that I would say represent two sides of what I love about intricate, gorgeous, cabled details in knitting. Now the first one is a pattern that some of you will have already seen that I've started if you follow me over on Instagram, and that is the Moby Sweater by Petite Knit. And yes, I know I say it all the time, but this was definitely love at first sight. This pattern is my perfect, sort of ideal, classic cabled jumper. The fit is loose and oversized without being really massive and it has quite a sort of masculine feel to it which is in stark contrast to the other cable jumper I'm going to get to in a minute. I'm finding that the Moby sweater is knitting up quite quickly despite the intricacy of the pattern. It's knit in a worsted weight with a combination of DK and lace weight yarn and I've gone for a kind of mottled, mild grey, which I just think really makes the stitches pop. There are so many things that initially attracted me to this jumper, but most of all, I love how the simplicity of the silhouette is gorgeously complemented by the complexity of the stitches. For people who are intermediate knitters and are looking for a little bit of a challenge, this piece is a great choice because there's a little bit of everything in it. You've got your beautiful thick cables which run down the sides and frame this lovely sort of mesh lattice shape down the middle and you've also got details like moss stitch on the shoulders which really give the fabric a lot of weight and make it really extra comfy and cosy. 
And as with many petite knit patterns, the thing that I really admire about this is the attention to detail and the really polished finish. You can see that the cuffs and the neckline just look so neat and clean. Now this gorgeous classic pattern comes in a good range of sizes from extra small to 5XL or for an 80cm to 150cm bust. Now on to my contrasting option for the cabled section and I'm going for something that goes completely the other way. It's not masculine and it's not the traditional cabled jumper that you might imagine. And this is the Morel sweater by Fiber Tails. Now Fiber Tails is a wonderful podcaster here on YouTube. She's actually one of the first people that introduced me to the world of knitting YouTube and I've been admiring her patterns ever since, but I've never actually knit one of them. But I knew as soon as I saw this, that this would have to be my first. Now the Morel sweater still has the basic features of a cabled jumper. You have the lattice section down the middle, and then you have other intricate details which frame it either side. And now the thing that really makes this jumper stand out is its massive oversized loose fit which will be really snuggly and you can tuck into all sorts of things like a pair of cozy trousers or a lovely flowy skirt. I love how this design sort of plays with some of the features of a traditional cabled jumper by using really intricate details like bobbles. And the name of the Morel sweater from what I've read on Ravelry is based on the Danish word for a variety of cherry. And that's such a lovely choice considering the little bobbles are shaped to almost look like cherries. I think that I would make this ethereal piece probably in a similar shade of white or maybe in a beautiful sort of yellowy vanilla. I think that those would really complement the lovely textured work on this piece. And if you're interested in knitting this jumper, it comes in a great range of sizes from extra small up to 4XL. So that's 80 to 140 centimeter bust. And now we're gonna move on to my second category, which is all about a play on a traditional striped jumper. Both of these options are not exactly your usual striped sweater, but I think that they would both make really good choices for somebody who's looking for something just a little bit different, but still has a flavor of a traditional stripey top. Now the first one is a little bit closer to a traditional striped jumper than the second, and this is the Nord Pullover by Hanna Rimmen. And you'll know if you've watched some of my other videos that this is a designer who I really admire. I've made one of her things before, and I think that her patterns are just really beautiful. And this piece looks simple, but it has some really beautiful details that make it stand out. I was particularly drawn to the finish on the neckline and the sleeves because she added in an extra line of the contrast color just to make them really pop. So the stripes are knit in color work and they're kind of broken stripes with alternating colors on each row. One other cool element about this jumper is it actually comes with a matching trouser pattern. So if you're looking to make a really cozy sort of loungewear set, this could be a really nice option. And this knits up in a combination of fingering and lace weight yarn, but I think that you could really easily substitute that just for a slightly more toothy wool and it would be just as comfortable and beautiful. This jumper comes in a slightly smaller size range from small to XXL for a 102 to 140 centimeter bust. Now coming on to my second choice for a classic striped jumper, I went for something quite different, but I feel because it still has the horizontal stripes, it is still kind of like a stripy jumper. And this option is the porcelain sweater, by another Scandinavian designer who I really enjoy, who is called Lene Holm Samso. And the porcelain sweater, as the name and the colors suggest, is inspired by beautiful, ornate white and blue pottery. I think if I were to make this, I would have to stick with the same colors, in part because I just love blue, but also because it really captures the essence of the painting of porcelain. Now the silhouette of this piece is very classic and oversized. I think it would be extremely comfortable to wear, but you do have a little bit of a challenge in the color work. There are three different stripes, which each feature unique color work motifs. So it will be a lot of fun to see the different patterns appearing in front of you. 
And I also love how the colorwork motifs are a very subtle nod to winter with some snowflakes and some vine patterns. I think that this one would just be really perfect for right now when it's so cold outside and I don't want to feel like Christmas is over just yet. And now going on to my third category and if you haven't been able to tell by now, I am absolutely obsessed at the moment with really intense texture. All I want to do is knit quite intricate but easy to follow stitches that create a beautiful kind of maximalist whole. And these two designs perfectly exemplify this strange contrast that I have of wanting clean lines and simple silhouettes, but a lot of detail and texture and wild and crazy stitches. And the first one that I've gone for is a very classic looking cardigan with a twist. And this is the Korshaven cardigan by Stricker Kaffer. She is a very talented designer who I've been following for quite a while now. Another person who I've yet to cast on a project from, but have been really looking forward to. Now the thing that I really like about this cardigan is that the shape and the silhouette is very simple, but you get a lot of interesting texture in the beautiful basket weave detail which is on it. She has three different patterns that I know of which all use this basket weave texture. I believe she has a jumper, a slipover, and then this cardigan. And I love them all, so it was difficult to choose which one I would go for. But I feel like I should probably add more cardigans into my wardrobe, just to mix and match. And so this one, I think, would be a perfect choice. Now, I personally believe that this cardigan would look good in almost any colour. But I reckon I will probably go for a light and neutral shade, just because that complements and really makes the texture pop. This cardigan is knit up in DK and lace weight yarn. So you could really go quite wild with a slightly contrasting colour of maybe mohair just to give it that extra little bit of intrigue. And this piece comes in sizes from extra small to 3XL. I did promise you maximalist crazy texture and I will say that the last one was actually tame in comparison to what I have to show you now. And this jumper really does look like a challenge. It's intricate and detailed and crazy complex, but I think it looks really, really beautiful and classic at the same time. This is the Waffle Loop Sweater by Other Loops. And Other Loops is a fairly new to me designer who perfectly encapsulates the theme of this video, which is reinvented or elevated classics. She has other examples of playing around with texture and stripes, but I particularly like this play on a sort of cable jumper gone wild. There's so much to see in this piece. I really recommend that you go and have a look for yourself if you're interested in it. There are so many different techniques at play, but I imagine once you get the hang of them, it wouldn't be too difficult to knit. And this piece is slightly limited in the size range. It comes in three sizes, but for quite an extensive fit. And that goes from an 80 centimeter to 115 centimeter bust. Now for this next category, I have two sweaters who are sisters from the same designer. And this is from Egg Yo Knit. And these are the Joel and Oba sweaters. The Oba sweater I think is really brand new. It might not be fully out yet, but definitely watch this space if it isn't. And it is the little sister, as she calls it, of her Joel sweater, which I have been admiring for months and months. Both of these pieces feature the same simple chevron pattern, which I really adore and think looks so fantastic in this combination of navy and beige. The Joel sweater is knit in sport weight yarn, and the designer here has used some Isiger mohair and tweed. And I personally really enjoy how the tweed picks up on a lot of the extra detail in the pattern, but I think that you could equally make it plain and it would look just as beautiful. It currently comes in two sizes that are meant to fit a range and it depends on how oversized you want the look to be. The description of the sizing is slightly complex because it says that it's measured at a different point because it's not exactly at the bust. So I translated it to, I think, roughly 120 centimeters or 140 centimeters, but 
definitely check that one out if you're interested. Now for the last category, I have just one pattern and this is an accessory that I've had my eye on. Some of you will know that I knit my first bag in the summer and it was a very complicated lacy thing. So for my second knitted bag, I wanted something that just really screamed winter. And for me, a yarn that really says winter is this really fuzzy boucle. I don't own anything in boucle yet, but I am absolutely ready to start my handmade boucle collection. And this beautiful teddy clutch by Petite Knit will be my first edition. Now Petite Knit designed this bag to be a clutch bag as it's suggested in the name, but I feel like it's quite big and I fancy adding a chain detail just so that I can sling it over my shoulder. I would probably make this in a darker neutral just because I get a little bit paranoid about getting a really, really light boucle bag really grubby. But there's a lot to love about this pattern. I think that this could be a very fun challenge for me because I've never made something that I've had to line and I've also never had to apply a knitted fabric onto a handbag frame. So that will be something new and really exciting to try out. And this teddy clutch is part of the boucle collection of little bits that Petite Knit has designed over the last few months. I know that she also made a really lovely cushion cover that I've also had my eye on because yeah, I am looking for more fuzzy and cozy cushion covers to sneak in here, even if my boyfriend does complain about me making it too girly. <laughs> Anyway, that just about wraps it up for my winter knitting plans. Drop me any comments down below about which of the two options you think I should go for in each category. I probably won't have time to make absolutely everything, but I'm really looking forward to enjoying these last few really cold months and wrapping myself in lots of cosy woolly things. Thank you again so much for watching and thank you to Lily Silk for sponsoring this video. I'll see you again next time. Bye.